I'm joined now by Song Jiang, the U.S. chief U.S. correspondent, rather, of the Shanghai Wenhui Daily. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. What would you say was the biggest success of this forum? I think uh, this is the uh, first international uh, forum for uh, Belt and Road uh, uh, initiative. And it was uh, initiated uh, in uh, 2013. Uh, more than 30 uh, world leaders participated. There was a joint communique, and uh, more than 270 projects were announced. But uh, very significantly, I want to uh, point out is that uh, uh, U.S. and Senate very high level uh, delegation, and uh, uh, also uh, Japan's Prime Minister, Mr. Abe, has sent his own uh, representative to join uh, to the uh, summit. That is the, also the first time uh, Japan and uh, America have shown uh, interest to work together with uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Open platform, open world economy, open development, just some of the words that President Xi Jinping said in his speech. Um, how do you think his speech was received? Uh, I think according to uh, various uh, world leaders in the uh, summit, uh, his uh, speech has been given very high uh, uh, remarks. And uh, uh, from uh, 2013, the last uh, four years, I think China has uh, evol evolved a lot uh, from the uh, extent uh, of the cooperation to the uh, scope uh, of the uh, like geo uh, uh, graphic uh, kind of uh, it's uh, expanded from uh, Asia and Europe to Africa to uh, uh, American countries and uh, I think that is very uh, significant and do you think with his talk of uh, being inclusive inclusive and open and transparent do you think that calmed a lot of concerns that some of these countries had mm. I think uh, in the last few years, uh, different countries, especially uh, Western countries, have shown their concern uh, of the real intention of Chinese uh, road and belt initiative. And uh, I think uh, China has uh, studied these uh, concerns very carefully. And the Xi speech has uh, uh, brought in uh, many suggestions from these kind of Western countries uh, to include uh, uh, international norms like to protect uh, the environment, to uh, protect uh, intellectual uh, rights, and uh, free uh, uh, trade and uh, uh, global, uh, globalization. That's uh, very important, I think. With so many different countries involved and all of the money, we're talking a lot of numbers here, what do you think are some of the challenges ahead mm -hmm. for Belt and Road? And I think uh, the most important thing is steer how to bring uh, different uh, countries' concerns and uh, interest together. Like uh, India has not sent a delegation to Beijing due to their uh, concern over a sovereignty uh, dispute on this uh, CPEC initiative. That is one uh, example China should give importance. I think in the future, uh, China has to uh, convince like uh, Russia, European countries, how to make their own concerns and uh, interests together with this uh, Belt and Road Initiative. So we'll have another forum in two years. Uh, what do you think we'll see between now mm -hmm. and then? I think China needs to uh, bring more achievements, to bring more projects, and to have more deep and uh, extensive cooperation with the countries in the, uh, this initiative, and to show that this is going to be a uh, 21st international initiative, not uh, only one. Uh, Chinese uh, initiative. It is going to be international one. It is going to be a, a kind of worldwide uh, initiative to benefit the world economy and uh, security, I think. All right. Song Jiang, thank you so much for your time. Thank we you. appreciate you joining us. Mm -hmm.